we go, start recording. Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Weekly Team Meeting. Today we are the 13th December of 2022. We have myself, Damien Duportal, Bruno Verharten, Stefan Merle, Hervé Lemeur, and Mark Waite around the table. Let's get started with announcements. So the weekly 2.382 is out at least to the technical assets as usual the rest of the checklist will be run a bit later today but it's the updated Docker... on the, on the weekly already two. oh yeah wow flash thanks uh hello kevin uh so that weekly is currently uh okay in terms of package war file docker image i assume that the change log is being reviewed if not already done so Everything reviewed, looks good. Reviewed, approved, updated, or reviewed, updated, approved, and queued for merge. Thanks to Kevin's work. Thanks, Kevin. So yes, no, nothing for the infrastructure team on that area. As uh, as Stefan said, uh, our instance is currently being redeployed with that new version for infra.ci. So we'll see if it works or if it doesn't. Um, next announcement, just a reminder that between Christmas and New Year's Eve, no one will be in the area, at least on the European and uh, Western uh, countries in the world. So let's assume that we won't run a team meeting the 26th of December. Since it's been deleted from the Jenkins calendar already, that's a good assumption. I like that. We will be consistent with the calendar. <laughs> Um, I'm adding an announcement. Uh, this Sunday, 19 of December, repo.jenkinsci.org, the GFrog Artifactory instance sponsored by GFrog for us, will be down, which means all the builds in CI Jenkins IO will be queued and no one will be able to build a Jenkins plugin in the world or a Jenkins release or any of the components during the uh, downtime. Yeah, I, th I think so. You're going. What you'll do is set ci.jenkins.io and its friends to to be in shutdown mode, or only ci.jenkins.io. Just ci.jenkins.io. Yeah. Ci and trusted will be failing, and as soon as the everything will be back down, trusted will be back again. Uh, maybe it could be smart to put trusted CI in maintenance mode as well, or even shut it down, just to be sure that if we start to have weird artifacts, that we don't generate update center uh, weird builds. Well, At least disable the update center builds. So that's I think that's a question worth asking to Daniel because there were some timing timing related things around update center that caused us to make sure that it ran very very frequently and in this case it could be down for six hours and and the question to daniel is what's the impact if it is down for six hours do we have impact on jenkins controllers worldwide etc so at first glance we should have no impact on the jenkins controller because the update center file is there it will just be aged somehow um, Last time we had a general issue with the update center, it lasted for 20 hours. So oh. the only people annoyed are us and plugin maintainer who want their release to be released. Uh, so for the second group of people, they should be reading the mailing list. Uh, we have a blog post, so I'm not sure how we can contact them. Eventually, may eventually community Jenkins IO, but yeah. And for us, it will be pager duty that is monitoring the age of the latest build of the update center.json file, which will be clearly far more than six hours. But yes, you're you're correct. I've got to check with Daniel. Well, but you gave good historical evidence that says we expect nothing from Daniel, be, no nothing because we've had worse outages than that in the past, and it did not derail Jenkins users. Good. If I remember correctly, there is even a, a, a process to follow to get back for the if it's if it's too late. On automatic is it's a few hours, and and if it's more than that, you have a manual 
a process to to follow that we got somewhere in the absolutely brain. great i forgot about this one but yes so yeah that that will be clearly okay are there an announcement or question on that uh, operation? Cool. Uh, I had I just had one note real quickly, Damien. Um, I just remembered that I have not submitted a tweet proposal for the JFrog blog post, so I'm actually going to uh, submit that to the advocacy and outreach Gitter channel so that uh, we can get a tweet out for the blog post as well. Cool. Thanks a lot for that reminder. Well, and and we should we should probably tweet that again, or we should we should send another announcement um, Friday, and then anybody who's awake at the time they start it could do could ask for the similar thing on Sunday. Uh, I'm not sure I'll be awake at the time they start. Do we do, do we, we have a stated time yet, Damien, or is that no? Not, I did not, not add any answer, so we'll try to send them a ping today. Uh, we okay. don't know what will be the time window, so I assume all day long. Um, so yes, uh, <laughs> that might be a surprise. We'll see. Thanks, folks. Um, a word about calendar. So next weekly release, as usual, next Tuesday. So that will be 20 December 2022. Next LTS release is planned for the 11th of January. Uh, I'm not aware of any security release. And next major event are DevOps. First them, as far as I can tell. We also have a December 20th webinar for the Jenkins project on Google Summer of Code. And I had an open question on, I assume we're going to just allow the weekly release on December the 26. 27 to proceed because canceling it is more hassle than just letting it run. Uh, but is that is that okay with everybody? I'm, I'll probably check yeah. it. So I don't feel any shame if we, if we just let it run. Mm -hmm. Yes, that should be, it will only open pull request a bit later, but yes, that should be okay. Let's let's hope no one try to push surprise pull request like last year. Okay. It will be a shame. Okay. Um, a word about the work that has been done. So we closed the one issue. Uh, that looks for me um, an obvious phishing attempt because the person created their account uh, like a few days ago, one or two days ago before, never did anything on GitHub, but the email is absolutely not the correct one. So there is no email with this one and this account is not related to that person in any case. I've asked the question and close after 21 hours just to put some pressure on the requester. Uh, maybe they will, but yeah, that one is worth. So I took on me to close it as not planned. It might be a mistake. If at the case, I apologize in advance, but right now it's, yeah, feels weird. Um, Java 19 support, thanks, Stefan. So Java 19 is generally available for every developers on CI Jenkins IO, and also on every virtual machine of the infrastructure that are used as build agents. Uh, so reminder that this GDK is not LTS. So it will be deprecated in, I think it's three or six weeks. A bit, we'll talk about that a bit later. There is a new subject on that topic, but right now it's available. So thanks Stefan for, for that work. Christmas gift in advance. Uh, remote move and rename of Jenkins Infra governance meeting. So that's the website meetings.jenkinsci.org. There, there has been some mis misunderstanding. So now it's back to its original state. Uh, just a note for everyone, when GitHub page refused to use a custom domain, you have to validate the custom domain by putting a DNS record generated by GitHub. But please be aware that when you validate a domain in GitHub, there are 
free location where you can validate one and it's easy to do the mistake. So thanks to GitHub, the GitHub support for helping me on this one. You can go to your account and there is a security area with verified domain, but only for your account and the repository of your account and your forks. You can go to your organization security settings and verify domain, but that one doesn't work for GitHub pages. You need to go to your organization settings, pages section, subsection, validate domain. And here you have to have verify the domain with DNS. Took me some time to understand that and the tickets to the GitHub support, but now it's back online. Uh, so the repository has been renamed. Thanks for uh, the proposal of Hervé, based on the misunderstanding of the discussion Hervé proposed to make it explicit that it's an archive. And now for the, there is another issue open. We'll talk about that. The board is uh, in the uh, board members area. So they decide if they want a new repository, this one, but yeah, discussion need to happen before we act. Uh, server 500 errors when trying to it, sign up. On sorry, oh, sorry, before you go on from that one, sorry. Yep. it was discussed in board meeting on yesterday, Monday, and okay. decided that we would continue the discussion in the GitHub issue to be sure we understand we have all the right context. I didn't bring enough context to the board meeting to have a good discussion there, but the board members that were in attendance, me, Uli, Alex, um, yeah, the three of us agreed we would continue the discussion there. Okay. Do you want me to to attend the next board meeting uh, to no need. Spain or get? Okay. No, no, no. Don't no. hesitate. We should be we should be more than capable of being involved in a GitHub discussion without requiring that you attend a, a meeting in order to do that. Oh, th that, that's not the meaning. It's more if it can uh, avoid go taking too much time and having yeah, a summary. No, I. That's very kind of you, but I think uh, our next meeting will be in January. And therefore, okay. if we can't resolve this question asynchronously over the course of the next four weeks, we should sort of be ashamed of ourselves. Okay. So just, just to a reminder, given how it happened, there will be a vote of all board member and a validation on the following weekly team before acting. That's and just that is sure, just fine. Yeah, just to right. be sure that no one acts too fast. Great. Not, not not a problem, but this, I I think we are a few who did not evaluate correctly the sensitivity of that topic. I would not have guessed. So I prefer uh, having a long discussion, even if it takes time, and then it will be okay for everyone. Consensus is key for that specific topic. Thanks very much. Agreed. Uh, account Jenkins IO does not have HTTP 500 errors. Um, thanks, Tim, for that part. That was also the opportunity to archive another repository and a component inside our system. Uh, the error was due to a former component in charge of synchronizing LDAP with Jira. But since Jira is on the CDF since at least two years, it's automatically done on Jira site, so it wasn't used anymore. So thanks, Tim, for the help on the cleanup there. Um, we had an issue with Windows Virtual Machine for CI Jenkins IO agent failing. Uh, that has been fixed. Thanks, Stefan, for uh, for the, the help on that one. We had a short-term and a long-term fix. It was due to templating. Uh, and here, just a note for the person following on the platform SIG meeting, the Windows container agents for inbound or SSH, uh, for inbound agents have a different, slightly different behavior than the rest because of the way PowerShell and the entry point script are parsing the arguments. Um, it sounds like it's a tricky topic because of shell and interpolating parameters. But what bothered me as a administrator and users is that the behavior is different between virtual machines and um, uh, and a container. So I'm not sure how the virtual machine are handling that part. Could be could be interesting to mention that. I'm also maintainer of the inbound agent, so I can take part. But important to share the topic. Um, various plugin downloads fail with HTTP response. 
So we, we have found an issue on mirror bits. Uh, it's not really an issue because uh, there is no documentation, but it seems like to be a normal behavior based on the reading the code. When you remove a mirror, there is a, there is a short outage of a few seconds that can extend to one minute. The time that the Redis system propagates to all replicas inside a cluster. That's what happened when Hervé uh, uh, cleaned up former uh, mirrors. We didn't know. And so it generated HTTP 500 for some people downloading plugins. Um, that means uh, we might need to have uh, to write the run books next time we have to delete. It's not the case when you update or create, but when you have to remove a mirror from the list, first, the first thing will be to scale down to only one replica, the cluster, apply the change and scale up again, just to be sure that everything uh, uh, that even if there is an issue, it doesn't take so much time. It's eventually consistent. Uh, mitigate a couple of security warning. That one wasn't for infrastructure themselves. That was more a track for the update center uh, manifest that has been done. We have renewed the certificate for repo jenkinsci.org prior to the migration. Thanks Kosuke, who immediately provided a certificate for one year. Um, so that one is okay, and GFrog is aware. Not able to fork Jenkins repository, so we were just waiting for confirmation by the contributor, which they did. HPI file in Artifactory, so it's a brand new plugin. Uh, and the brand new plugin uh, had the issues, uh, multiple issues. So. Some part of the documentation uh, were weren't. There were some holes in the plugin developer documentation, as I understand, in the area of Gradle because they use Gradle for building. So we raised the topic. Their initial release has been is out. They need to, or at least they should move to Maven in order to benefit from automatic documentation on plugin Jenkins IO. Uh, and there has been an issue on the Javadoc due to that plugin. I will uh, have an, uh, an open issue in the, uh, a few minutes. Clean up resource of prod confluence. That was that was a bit of money. So thanks, uh, Hervé, for that work. So the we have set up a dump of the database, which is inside the Azure bucket. That dump is encrypted with the GPG key of a few person here. And it's inside an encrypted bucket, which is private. We have different layer of security. The reason is because Confluence had the security section. Uh, so that's quite a sensitive data. And the resources have been removed from Azure. So that should be uh, a few hundred of dollars per month. So it's so that should be visible on the next bill. Uh, I don't remember the last issue. I think it was absolutely off topic. Yes, it was off topic. No question on the work done. Uh, just a note from Hervé. Good thing. Yeah. Uh, renew, I'm, yeah, I'm adding back on the announcement. Renewal of the domains. Jenkins DNS domains. So that was under, that's a system by Tyler. So I understand that Jenkins.io has been renewed successfully. Is my understanding correct? checking to be sure I remember which ones it is that are yeah so Jenkins dash no Jenkins dash ci.org has been renewed uh, Jenkins.io will be renewed probably within the next 16 or 17 days upcoming the two weeks next, yeah six next two weeks okay so thanks Tyler and Mark for all yeah, thanks Monitoring to Tyler for the automation. All I did was monitor. And Kosuke. Oh, yes. Kosuke for the naming. For the renewal. No, no I think Kosuke, for repo. This is this is different. Yeah, this is an, that was an yeah. SSL certificate that Kosuke did. Okay. Certificate okay. and domain yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. Different. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I mean. No problem. 
Uh, new items. We had a short outage on CI Jenkins I earlier today. Page duty uh, uh, showed that, and uh, Page duty and a few person like Stefan and I had the proxy errors from the Apache in front of CI Jenkins IO. Um, so we status was updated and updated back once uh, CI Jenkins IO was back. We have an issue to open to put what we did. No obvious error. We saw a peak in network traffic, a lot of incoming connection and outbound traffic as well. A lot of uh, system CPU usage. So not IO, no IO, no IO peak at all. So it was definitely CPU waiting for uh, network resources. So we checked the logs of Jenkins, nothing. We checked uh, thoroughly the Apache error logs, nothing weird. Uh, no word uh, request on the access log as well. So we are not really sure what happened. Uh, that, that spawned for four, four or five minutes. We can see that clearly on Datadog. So we will open an issue, put everything there. And I think uh, I'm, we, need, we will need uh, to ask the security team just for a double check, uh, just to be sure to see what happened. But in terms of infrastructure, nothing uh, obvious. Um, that was correlated with a peak of bomb builds, though, like 600 builds at the same time, but that's something we're used to, so not really sure. Yeah, I'm, I've been helping with the bomb uh, maintenance, and I've been thoroughly impressed with how well CI.Jenkins.io, there have been times, I think I've seen queues of over 800, and I may have seen queues of over 1,000, and it still survived, so. Yes. That's a huge work between pipeline uh, underlying work, tuning and infrastructure work. Uh, so thanks everyone on that because yes, that, that's worked very well. Uh, no obvious issue, metrics and logs show a peak of network connection. So something we have in mind here for CI Jenkins IO is that the tuning of the Apache server is not, not always the best. It doesn't have caching of static assets, for instance. But one of the elements here, we are not sure that it was Apache. Datadog uh, does not show something obvious. Apache was waiting for connections. So one of the hypo working hypotheses right now is uh, moving away from GNLP TCP connection and moving that to web sockets, because that will decrease greatly the amount of TCP sockets because connections are reused by Apache front server, even when you upgrade web sockets. And that will avoid exposing the TCP port of, uh, for the TCP connection. So that could be a working hypothesis. Um, peak of TCP inbound GNLP, because we saw a lot of uh, uh, agents spawn on EKS at that moment. A word on OSU OS cell, unless you have a question about CI Jenkins IO. So uh, I've double, I've checked with OSU OSU OS cell uh, because of uh, an issue with the mirror. So there is a so first of all, I've introduced everyone from the team, at least Mark, Stefan, Hervé, and Hai, uh, because they were still uh, linked to Tyler for them. So even Olivier was an unknown person, <laughs> as I understand the email, but I might be wrong. Um, first of all, uh, checked in with them. I'm gonna uh, run book to write. So the goal of this run book is to document for the team that when we have an issue with OSU OSL resources, uh, so first, which OSU OSL resources do we have? And where to open issues. So there is an email. There is an email we have to send the email and it automatically create issues for the for us. We don't have access to the portal uh, and that's normal case for them. As a reminder, OSU, OSU OSL is a sponsor. That's Oregon University. Um, they provide us uh, virtual machines mirrors for free. And they used to also provide us power PC machines on uh, an IBM mainframe, as I understand. We No, it wasn't. 
No, OSU oh. OSL could provide those to us if we were if we wanted them, ah. but they it's not them. We were actually using services from IBM for those. Oh, those it was things. okay. So my mistake. Then I, I was okay. I misunderstood. So OSU OSL could provide us more resources. Right. They they have facilities. They have PowerPC for sure available. I'm not sure about mainframe, but they have PowerPC available for sure. And and IBM pointed us to power to OSU OS, OSU OSL if we needed them, but I don't see enough interest in supporting that architecture, so we're we're not going to bother. Okay. They, so the reason, but no interest for Jenkins project. So the reason I'm mentioning that um, I shared with Bruno. Uh, that could be interesting to contact them for other architectures because they also have our, uh, IRM CPUs. And I assume they could be interested if they are not already providing a RISC-V machines as well. That could be uh, something to check with them. Mm -hmm. Will do. Uh, yeah. So that could be interesting if we want to provide, uh, uh, let's say, on the age agents for CI Jenkins IO if you want to uh, validate regularly plugins or Jenkins Coron. So that's related to infrastructure. No question on OSU OSL? Okay. Um, so we have the issue there, I won't repeat. So Sunday, we are going to migrate. Repo Jenkins CI, so GFrog is going to migrate for us the instance. Uh, everything is on the issue. A word about GDK depreciations. So we have two GDK depreciations to discuss, or at least to mention. First, GDK 8. So we are inside the critical area, which is how to make the life of plugin developers easier. Uh, it's been sometimes that we don't, that there were some uh, I forgot the word, differences, let's say, between what the documentation and tutorial for plugin developer says, what the Maven archetypes use to generate new plugin project from Maven, and what the documentation of the shared library maintained by the infrastructure are saying. We have three, we had three different ways. One of the main issues is that for sometimes, quite sometimes, we try to go on just call the function and let the default value uh, take place, which was fine until we reached the GDK8 depreciation. So there are half of the people involved that state GDK8 should just be deleted and we should shift the default. And the other half of the participant of the discussion are more, they don't like surprise. So shifting the default value could create issues. Uh, there is no easy consensus there, um, but one of the directions that everyone agrees on will be having a walk to be sure that build plugin function starting from this week should not be called with the default value to avoid byte surprises. Because if everything is explicit, at least the list of platform you want to build your plugin and test it against, then you should avoid surprise in the future and we could change. So maybe removing a default value could be something. What's uh, the I impact? Get... Sorry? Yes, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Go no, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I was saying, uh, I don't think that's our job, but would it be possible to have something uh, automatically send a PR? Yeah, uh, I've, so I've, that... I've planned that. I've planned that. So... Absolutely. Yep, go, go, go ahead, uh, I've explained. I've planned to to create a pull request on every plugin which have uh, an empty build plugin uh, to put a complete one from the archetype. Uh, there are uh, two main uh, advantages uh, doing that. First, we will be able to define uh, this, uh, to eliminate uh, GTK8. Uh, then we will be able also to to determine uh, which plugins are using Docker in a way which is incompatible with use container plugin value. And uh, then identifying this plugin, we can then put false for this value 
for this plugin only, and then uh, make this value the default one in the build plugin. So you won't have to put use container uh, uh, in every Jenkins file if you don't need to uh, to not use it. Actually, currently we can't uh, put this value as a default as we don't know which plugin will break. But putting the default uh, build plugin template uh, will allow us to identify and fix them. So or we're propose ready. a fix yep. for them. Yep. Uh, why it's on the area of the infrastructure? Because we already did that, because the infrastructure team is partially responsible of the shared library build plugin, because that plugin is at the interface between uh, people who provide abstraction for building plugin in a, a reproducible way, interface of plugin developers and contributors, and infrastructure. Because when you call build plugin, that has some impact on the infrastructure. You need to spawn the correct agent. There it was, for instance, build plugin can be called with use container agent set to false or true. It's true by default, as far as I can tell. But if you have a plugin with a Maven process that run Docker for its tests during the Maven verify phase, you need to change the default value to run your test on a virtual machine instead of a container, because you cannot run Docker inside a container. It's not a safe, it, technically it works, but it's not safe at all. So that's why we forbid that on the platform. Also, build plugin defines the labels that we prov that we use to spawn machines. So Stefan started to work on GDK 19. So this is an area where we have to work on. We have to change the label and clean them up based on what we provide on CI Jenkins. So that's why the topic is sensitive and why we it took us as a community so much time because there are different areas of responsibilities and we have to all agree before moving on to that area. That's why here, since we already did the batch of pull request exercise as infrastructure team with the help of RV and Alex, as far as I can remember, we should be able to easily do that to avoid the pain for the others. That's somehow part of the services that we provide as infrastructure team. Um, that will be a good exercise for us if we need to check which plugin is using virtual machines and need Docker and which isn't, or any kind, any kind of metrics collection or behavior collection from the, all the plugin, the thousand plugin. So it's still useful for us to have a procedure that can be run out of the box. Does it make sense for all of you? Yes. Uh, finally, something where we could help or not, but that's more for Kevin. Um, so there's been a work uh, pushed initially by Jean-Marc, then Basile, then Kevin. I contributed a bit and Tim as well. Right now, Basile made a good point. That is the Jenkins IU website tutorials should always show the content of what the archetypes is generating. So it's always synchronized. So an improvement to avoid the multiple pull requests each time we update the archetypes will be finding a way to automate when Jenkins.io is generated, having something that gets the template and put it in the documentation instead of having to cherry pick manually. That way Jenkins.io would always be in line with the archetype and eventually put a date or a link to the original file. There are multiple solutions, maybe just to link, because I know that ASCII doctor is able to render inline remote code. So there are different ways, but that will be a nice topic to avoid that pain in the future. That IO. Do you have any question, things unclear on that topic? No, I like the, I like the idea. Certainly, we're we've already got some automation that feels sort of like that that knows how to automatically update the recommended Jenkins version based on the current LTS and the the preceding major LTS. So so I think that kind of automation is much appreciated. Great. 
And also we should update the date, the test of the pipeline library to do the same. Mm, okay. Because that's another location where the method build plugin is documented. So we should ensure at least that the readme is able to point to the archetype. So that will be the source of truth because the archetype is an automated system. And then we should have always a test that use the latest archetype and try that method and it should, it should work as expected, even in a unit test. So everyone changing the pipeline library wouldn't be caught off guard by breaking the behavior for thousands of developers. So now that should be an issue written on for us in LDesk to list this point and have action items. And same, a, a question was triggered when Stefan uh, pushed to the GDK19 about how the infrastructure team is planning to support the non-LTS GDK. Because GDK19 is the first time, as far as can Daniel Beck remember, which means it's a good indicator that we're able to provide edge version clearly in advance. But that raised the question, what will happen when GDK19, which has a short time living, it's not LTS, when it will be replaced by GDK20, et cetera, until the next GDK LTS. So the proposal here, we have an issue at desk open by Stefan uh, to work on proposing uh, end of life support by the infrastructure for the tools we provide. The proposal in simple, because same, same issue, do we make GDK19 explicit and we have to ask developer to change it over time and they have to change often? Do we provide Jenkins GDK age that change automatically creating surprise breaking? Um, no consensus. So my proposal as infrastructure officer there after discussing with uh, Stefan, uh, that's the proposal from Stefan is we write down that we stick to the official GDK depreciation. There is an end of life program and we stick to it. And then we say when a GDK is deprecated, we remove it like two or three weeks after the end of life, time for us to move it. And since we should be able to work on a batch of pull requests, if we are successful, we should open pull requests on all plugins saying, hey, it looks like you are using a non-LTS GDK. Do you want to use the latest because your current one is deprecated? Does it make sense? Because those two topics in fact are correlated, right? That that makes sense and that aligns perfectly with the, the way we describe our support of Linux platforms, where we say the Jenkins project says we do not support any platform that the upstream provider does not support. Yep. And we, we drop support immediately. So the day that they stop supporting Red Hat Linux 7, as an example, we will gratefully stop supporting that. <laughs> exactly. Um, there has been a nice, discu a nice proposal as well uh, around the GDK age that will be always the latest age. So we only maintain one at a time, which is not LTS. That if it's that GDK, uh, the proposal come from initially from Alex Earl. Um, by default, failure with that GDK does not fail the world build. It's just an indicator. Um, and developer could opt in on failing their builds if they want. They say, no, I really want to fail if it fails on that GDK. Uh, however, if if the age GDK 9, uh, 19 discussion is a topic, we could still keep that behavior saying, we have a list of identified GDK that we know is LTS 11, 17, and 21 in the future. So any GDK not on the LTS list could benefit from that uh, optional behavior on the build plugin function. So still a good idea. Thanks, uh, Hervé, for the reminder here. I think we should, uh, yeah. It's an optional, uh, nice to have, but uh, yeah. I think it's nice to have, but still useful and could uh, talk to developers to help them uh, because the GDK is going to change more and more often and Jenkins is just starting to take the path. It's brand new for the community. Uh, we are late on the GDK ecosystem on that and it's not an easy uh, cliff to have. So if we provide 
that kind of behavior for developer, it's really a service we can provide to them. Nothing else on this? Is everything clear? Okay, just a word, the Ubuntu 20.0 for upgrade campaign. So uh, thanks Hervé for taking care of uh, digging everywhere on that part. Uh, it sounds like all the obstacles to start are removed. Azure uh, provide the correct free uh, version. Um, so in order to be sure that everything works, Hervé started to work with the new VPN for the new private network. If I'm not mistaken, Hervé, can you confirm you are using Ubuntu 22? On the oh. VPN, yes. Uh, let me check. Uh, um... If it's not the case now, that will be soon. Yes, it's the case. Uh, it's okay. Cool. So the goal is to validate the full Puppet lifecycle. And if Puppet works, then we could start the campaign for upgrading Ubuntu 22 for all of our machines. Um, so we will have for Azure, that will be easy. For AWS, that's a topic to wait for January. They should be the last because that could mean, and I think we should remove all the persistent services from AWS and move them to Azure, which involve trusted CI, finishing the migration of package to both Oracle and Azure, and then we will see. But not right now. Right now we are speaking about upgrading the existing machines on Azure, that should happen in January. And we could also start, if everything works for RV on the VPN, we could start the Packer uh, base image for the virtual machines we are uh, using on CI Jenkins AU. So we can, so the new VPN is, is using it to validate. And next, Packer image. Any question on that one? January, Oracle, rest to be checked. Uh, quickly, work in progress. So the issue we weren't able to finish this week. Uh, some Jenkins mirrors are using the wrong media type for plugin downloads. Uh, that's the reason initially why we contacted OSU OSL. It's fixed on OSU OSL, so thanks. They were really reactive. There is one last mile for us. That will be uh, updating the same on archives in Kitsayo, which is a mirror that we host. So we should update the Apache configuration so HPI plugin will uh, use the correct content type as well. Um, the user confirm it's fixed for them and they will open a new issue if they find other mirrors with that problem. So thanks a lot for that contributor. So we keep uh, that issue on the next milestone that should be quick. It's a few Apache uh, lines. Stefan, a word on Windows Server 2022? It's brand new. I started yesterday, I think. And uh, it's a work in progress. Not, not much to say. OK, work by Stefan. Um, Jenkins IO. Javadoc build is failing. So a Z DevOps for a jar file downloaded by the Javadoc generator seems to be a corrupted or invalid zip file. That's the message on the log. I haven't had time to, to go further, but uh, yeah, that is breaking the Javadoc generation. So I might need some help on that topic. Uh, I'm not sure if it's because the Z DevOps new plugin is not following some what a thing is it because their gradle system does not create the jar documentation javadoc correctly i'm not really sure so uh, that thing is built once a week so it failed this week so we have a few days to fix that uh, i'm not sure who will be the right person to help there but at least i've opened an issue so it's known um, need help and Diagnostic. I'm not sure if we could uh, ask help from Alex and Tim, eventually Daniel. Uh, that was just a note. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a place where I've had some dealings as well. So if if needed, I might be able to assist. Okay. 
Mark could be able to assist. Uh, prevent creation of new issues in the website project on Jira. I don't remember that issue. <laughs> I have to open it. Uh, that's me. So okay, that's, it's on you. that's Kevin and I are, have been working on, and Kevin's actually deep into a review of all the issue reports on the website project so that we can make that thing, um, <laughs> remove it from the list of possible projects to which you can submit a bug report. And... Um, make it so that effectively the, the issues there become read only because we switched a year or two ago to using GitHub to track the issues for Jenkins.io. To migrate issue remaining. Better. Yeah, and I don't know if we will actually migrate any. It, it's right now the, the, the quantity of things in that site that look useful, the, those bugs, yeah we may not migrate any of them may just choose to say oh they're all they're all quiet and it's been years since we last did anything on those those issues leave them alone okay so you understand there is no action required by from the infra team not, that not yet once once kevin's and kevin's the one doing all the work once kevin's review of the website issues and my my follow up uh, then we'll probably ask Infra to remove it from the uh, the pick list on the Jenkins Jira system. Okay. But as it turns out, I'm a Jira administrator, so I may may forget to ask and just do it myself. The the better for you. Right. So new repo for Jenkins board. So board. We'll discuss and decide as we said earlier. Right. Uh, Gavin Mogan reported he has completed the transformation, the, the extract from Google Doc into uh, a portable format. And so uh, he's ready for that. We just have to get agreement where to put it, et cetera. Yep. So same uh, same status that one won't be on the next milestone. We will wait for the consensus that right. Will there is no reason for you to put that on the milestone. Yeah. Uh, Azure cleanup of resource group prod committee function. So I was waiting for feedbacks uh, for one week before deleting. I had a plus one from Gavin and plus one from Alex Earl. So I will consider that we can now delete. Uh, these resources right after the meeting. No opposition. Mirostat report wrong results. So I don't think we were able to do anything. Hervé, can you confirm? Uh, yeah, I, I didn't look at it. No, no problem. We were, we were too, so no worries. Uh, still to be done. So the goal was to check the state of four uh, mirrors that are marked as disabled on mirror bits and to see if we can put them back to add more capabilities to the mirror distribution grid. Realign repo Jenkins .org mission. Um, so I've prepared a few repositories to test. Uh, I need to work on my Maven, uh, on a Maven plugin. So work in progress. Good news, it, it sounds like that we should be able to only turn on authentication on the mirrors and that should be okay. But we will need help from the documentation team at least because we will have to communicate to plugin developers. Hello, you need to follow carefully that procedure to generate a settings XML Maven file in your home directory with an encrypted password. So we already do that for the plugin release. But that one, we will have to communicate that it will be required for anyone who want to build Jenkins plugins and projects. So it's an annoyance for developers and for the project, but not being sponsored by GFrog will be more than an annoyance. So given how quickly people seem to react to a missing documentation or unclear topic, it means that before acting, we absolutely need to prioritize updating the Jenkins documentation 
we can start now. There is no prerequisites because anyone who authenticates can already uh, and continue working. There is no constraint. It's just that we will have to communicate that moment in time. It will be one hour, then one day, then definitively. Uh, they will enable uh, uh, authentication to be mandatory. So that might fail some setups. I propose a planning on January for that uh, with the first try end of January, uh, the last week of January, that should be okay. Um, Kevin, I will open issues on Jenkins IO once I have a clearer view because I need to validate uh, the test I'm doing and I need to challenge the choices that Mark and Hyde did uh, with Daniel Beck and Basil at least. So it's just, I'm mentioning that so you won't have any surprise that should happen after Christmas, I think. Thanks very much, David. Appreciate it. Uh, test in progress. We'll need help from the team. Uh, I think it will be worth it to involve John Mark Messen as well because he's working closely on the plugin, uh, uh, on the program around plugin developers, at least beginners. So that will be interesting as well to understand his view because he's sometimes struggling with the instruction. Uh, so that could be, uh, let's say, a great uh, smoke test to run it through John Mark. So if he has any question, that, that means a lot of people will have this question for sure. Because if John Mark has issue, then a lot of our contributor will have. Uh, Windows agent on CI disconnect prematurely. So uh, I took the issue from the end of uh, Stefan because he was having issues with his vagrant environments. So it's on me. Uh, the goal is to change the labels and merge uh, to update the acceptance test. Um, if you don't mind, Mark, uh, because you're here, the proposal I did on the pull request before we can close this issue, uh, we are changing. I propose that we absolutely remove the sequential stage OS and Java because no one is consuming these labels. And I propose to instead remove Java here and use Linux and VM. So my goal is to have only one set of labels that maps to the build plugin function and all the, the combination that we can find on the code. Does it make sense for you? Yes, absolutely. You're this thing, cool. this, this acceptance test was just a trivial thing trying to help me detect when ci.jenkins.io failed to allocate an agent that would have a particular, a label that we knew was used elsewhere. Your proposal sounds great. Go for it. Cool. So that means that acceptance test will be an acceptance test for at least the build plugin method, which is the most, most used method. And finally, the biggest topic of the day, even if it's the topic, uh, the last one, it's the network work by RV to recreate all of our production network. So RV, could you give us an update on this one, please? The virtual network are ready. Um, I'm current, I've created also a VPN VM, a virtual machine. And I'm currently uh, working on uh, making Puppet uh, manage uh, this uh, virtual machine. I've also added, uh, I've um, modified the in Docker OpenVPN uh, image and repository. I've modified the Go wrapper to deal with easy RSA. So we can uh, create a client configuration uh, file uh, in, uh, for several uh, VPN, not only uh, VPN.jenkins.io, but also the new one, private.vpn.jenkins.io. Great work. So the next step is, I assume, uh, finishing the puppet sport here and testing it with a few users. Uh, just a note on the, I think it's on that issue, 
Uh, Tim Yacom asked if it was required to create a new virtual machine. It was on, it's on the other private KUTS cluster, KITS cluster. Oh, okay. So, uh, but that's related to that topic. So yep. the answer is yes, because the current VPN machine is a huge machine that costs a lot of money. It uh, we could have four virtual machines of the size of the new one for the same cost. The reason mm. why the machine is that huge is because the requirements to have free network interfaces, you need a big size size to virtual machine. We don't Answer. need that. Sorry? Answer is last question. Why we didn't use the current VPN? If I'm understood it right, is because we can't we we can't uh, modify the the size of this machine to have a, little, a smaller one without uh, reinstalling it. So we no, uh, yeah. we went to the to have a clean state as a weapon phrase code. So a uh, clean state, but that's nice to have. Still good to have. The, the initial reason why we need to create a new machine is because we have IPv4 uh, overlap issues on the current networks. So as soon as we start peering the networks between the new networks and the former one, the overlap issue will spawn to the new networks and we won't solve the core issue. So okay. since VPN Jenkins IO uses peering to be able to contact all the current production network, we need a new machine on a clean state. And that's a hard requirement. Clean state and network overlap to avoid. I'm not mentioning the complexity of a setup on a single machine that is able to peer to at least six different networks. <laughs> And I'm not mentioning IPv6 right now. So that's the reason. Better to have a clean state. And that's a good opportunity for us to, nice to have, but opportunity to validate Ubuntu 22. So thanks, Hervé, because uh, that's a lot of work as well. So between Stefan and Hervé, I, you deserve a, a lot of. Uh, of kudos because yeah you you did a lot of work here allowing me to focus on repo jenkins ci and providing a lot of value for end users so thanks a lot steam that's all for me do you have any points you want to say in the recording or can i stop the recording okay so closing the recording